Hello and welcome to Wondering Monster, America's test table where we don't play test games, we stress test them. I am John Baltusberger. I am Charles R. Bernard. I am Ian Asavas. I am Mr. Bashke. And friends, it has been a wackadoodle time. Um, things things have been pretty crazy lately for us here. We are still just girdled deep in Zine Quest, um, and and uh, at, over at Madness Heart Press, uh, Charles and I are banging our head against uh, just a flood of crazy things. In fact, uh, Miss Christine Morgan has an announcement tomorrow, which is going to be, uh, which is just going to make our lives more complicated, but more, like, more fun, I think. I'm looking forward to it very much. Yeah. Um, I've got the whole day set aside. <laughs> um, Ian, you have been just, like, gasping at editing like I, not you gassy. wake up, it's gurgling. I like it. I like it. You wake up in the morning <laughs> and you begin editing, and then at some point someone yells at you, and you realize you've been crying in the shower for thirty minutes. Um, all of this is made hard by the fact that I was actually killed in a knife fight back in nineteen thirty four. Um, uh. I was I was minding my own business selling laudanum lace sodas to mm-hmm. scrappy factory working children as mm-hmm. you do mm-hmm. and um I just I just got stabbed. You um, look like you got better. Well, so what <laughs> happened is I went to hell as one Naturally. does. Naturally. Yeah. <laughs> and um uh I'm trying to pretend like I don't know anything about Christian hell when I've like spent so much like <laughs> where I, like like I have a degree in the damn thing. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, this little imp with like a full beard. Like when I say this imp had a beard, I don't mean like my beard or Paschke's beard or Charles's beard or Ian's beard. I mean like a like a Rumpelstiltskin beard, like a like a fucking no, like yo. One you might wear as a garment, say. Yeah, like like he had it looped through his nipple rings. And the, <laughs> anyway, and he said, John, do you want to get back at the man who stabbed you? And I, uh, between screaming and agony from my skin <laughs> being peeled from my uh, muscles by demons, I said, that actually does sound like a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I was sent back. And I realized, as soon as I kill the guy, I have to go back to hell. Instead, why don't I write and sell spooky books? Yes, the man who stabbed me is gone free, but I get to stay here and um, write drivel for everyone. Um, I say all of that to say that the game we are uh, uh, going to be stressing Ian out with tonight is white. Um, Not... Not like the color white, but the the other spelling, which denotes uh, undead spirit with a taste for vengeance sriracha. Um, Ian, tell us tell us about this game that you you have never mentioned before. Five minutes ago, we have no idea what's going on. Well, I always like to keep you on your toes, so. <laughs> Whites is a game that is based off of a lot of... It's a love letter to fantastic goth, modern gothic storytelling. It takes all of the elements that you really enjoy out of classic TTRGBs like Vampire the Masquerade, that whole line of just undead remnants doing their thing. Uh, a lot of the glamour and glitz of like 90s and 80s horror action movies all the sex and glamour that comes with the goth aesthetic all rolled into one world of darkness style. Yeah. I see. I'm going to, I've never been a fan of world of darkness. So instead I am choosing to think of it as crow. Like yes, that's so excellent. Yeah. Yep. Also excellent. Yeah. yeah. I, 
there's a you know there is like an appendix n in the back of this that lists all the different bands that were inspiration from dead can dance to pearl jam to uh, rob and, zombie etc and their specific eras that the yeah uh, yeah i like that a lot um, now i, I assume the song today, but yeah i assume the song rave in the grave is at the top of that list <laughs> Is that like the monster mash of 90s it's club not, music? I mean, it, it kind of is, yes. It's so bad. <laughs> so um, the... I, I will just say this. Uh, the the creator of this um, game, whose name I cannot pronounce, I, Lucas? unfortunately. Lucas, okay. The <laughs> slash to the L through me. No, uh, I, I am, as anyone will know, I have the hardest time pronouncing things. Like, that's when my speech impediment comes out, and I'm just like, Bruh! and like, if I can find any way to butcher someone's name, my brain will make it happen. And it's embarrassing for everyone. He um, called me gone for the first, like, three months. It was gone? adorable. Um, but I, I just wanted to say to Lucas, um, if you want to use the following slogan in any of your marketing materials, free of charge, this is yours. Okay? Ready? You guys, this is a good one. Okay. Revenge is a dish best served back. <laughs> Except, or sent back. I love it. Sorry, sent not back. served oh, back. Oh, no, no, no. Revenge I love is a it. Dish I, exact, I want back. exactly. Yeah. All of my years of working Fuck. in the, no, in working in industry, time. I got it on the first time in my yeah. brain. So uh, that is fantastic. So uh, <laughs> Lucas um, Colazies, uh, again, I apologize for butchering names. Uh, we have links that we will post with all of the different offerings that come from him, and this game is actually free. It is a translation of his works all the originals are in polish so it is he was very excited that we're representing this this was actually a fan request and uh in his perspective this is one of the ways that we can help better represent polish gaming and bring it to our uh, our uh, audio our english-speaking audience so no is... i will say that um a uh, funny story my uh for for most of my life i always assumed that my family was german uh my last name is baltusberger and my dad is a a like six two blonde haired blue eyed <laughs> man um but uh like in the last couple of years of my grandfather's life he was like what german no we're polish <laughs> and uh we did some digging and i found my great 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 grandfather Schmully. Uh, from Ooh. Poland, who, of course, was name. a rabbi. Yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> I love the name Shmuley. It's a so, very good name. Yeah, the game itself is built on the chassis of um, lasers and feelings. So, if you're familiar with that light storytelling game, then this is something that is very easy. What makes this game unique compared to a lot of the other ones is this is on that far side of rules light narrative heavy with no gm prep so if if i didn't make pre-gens for example i would be going into this blindly and allowing the players to completely craft a gaming experience the role of the gm in this is to provide obstacles and challenges and then to also adjudicate the rules but really the geniuses in this are our wonderful panel of people here so may that's... lucifer have mercy on us all Absolutely. Oh, and then as a quick kind of plug for people who are unfamiliar, in this game, all the players are undead. They have come back from the dead. They have all been horribly murdered and betrayed in some way or another. And that hatred festered so much that they couldn't rest quietly in hell. And some spirit, some force, some entity, something brought them back to life with extra piss and vinegar style and grit and has basically made them immortal figures until they destroy or get the vengeance of this target that has wronged them so. So they each have special marks that the grave has left on them, trinkets of their former life, and the two stats in the system, which instead of lasers and feelings, is sex and violence. Sex being representative of grace, charisma, influence, empathy, both kind of grace and emotionality and personality and violence being aggression force um you know all of your needy stuff i've but decided that in order to embrace the 90s-ness of it all uh i'm going to change my stats to sex and candy <laughs> what does it smell like uh, i mean 
magma and sugar, but oh. I mean, he never really goes into detail in this. Disco song. lemonade. I, I just oh, yeah. want you know that my wife just served me divorce papers for that joke. So <laughs> I was assuming well, revenge disco... is a dish best served. That yeah, yeah damn it! Now I did. That's you did. That, I fucked it up because <laughs> you want to say served cold, and so yeah, damn. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, uh, see, so you're not alone. Yeah. You take the revenge. You put it in a self-marked envelope. Return to sender. I see, said no like... pickles. Yeah. Yeah. I love all... pickles. So, Man, I that want being pickles. said, oh, we are already in the game screen. Great. How about we allow our players to introduce their characters? All right. I'll start as has become um, my annoying... Uh... <laughs> precedent <clears throat> i will be playing uh max cannon who um was a congregant at a little place called the first savior church and uh i was a regular attendee in no small part uh because of the funeral home that my family owns cannon funeral home and uh, I was a um, not exactly a sexton, but kind of the smarmy guy who like talks to families and so forth after you know a loved one has passed. Um, as a congregant uh, there, I became um, very loyal and uh, very involved in the church, and I started noticing some irregularities with contributions, and uh, one thing led to another. Um, I wound up confronting uh, the pastor, Gabriel Snow, about the matter, and I got shot in the head. And as happens to the scion of a funeral home family, even though it blew off, like, arguably the right upper quadrant of my skull entirely, um, using, like, Play-Doh and chicken wire and, like, bits of glass and so forth, I was carefully reassembled. Um, meanwhile, my soul is screaming in hell, um, but my revenant corpse is the form that my soul took on. Um, I am a very closed coffin guy uh, with the coffin regrettably open as I shamble about in my black burial suit, with my hair done real nice, dragging an enormous crucifix with which I beat people. It's like one of those one. Yeah, yeah. Revenant one has entered the ring. I guess I'll go. Uh, I am playing uh, Drake. Uh, Drake uh, was a low-level kind of gang member from uh, his regular life, eventually kind of feeling like the family was not all it was cracked up to be, wound up leaving his his chosen family of that gang to join a more mafioso type. And they got involved uh, through the back end, I believe, with the with the church that we're, we're going up against um, eventually kind of leading to his death. And now resurrected looks mostly the same. Um, the internal bleeding and everything is covered up by his Hawaiian shirt because he just doesn't give a fuck what anyone <laughs> thinks. And he will beat you mercilessly with his brass knuckles, but he's going to look good while doing it. Do you have like greasy, slicked back hair and like sunglasses, or is it like a mishmash? Of, like you're just like a just undead corpse in a Hawaiian shirt trying to look okay. cool. Uh, basically, after he came back, kind of pulled a Highlander, uh, the the Krogan, where it's just like, <laughs> oh, I'm back alive, and then he just like poorly shaved his head, so there's still some <laughs> chunks of hair, but he just doesn't care. I love it. I love it. I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm Wyatt Finn. Um, I was a journalist, and uh, I kind of, you know, I styled myself after like the the journalist of like a, a gone by era, where it's like, yeah, the journalists are the ones that crack stories and then corruption. Um, so I, you know, I worked my way up and and wrote stories and kind of got buried most of the time by my paper, which was definitely owned by the city. And therefore I was never actually allowed to run any of the stories. Um, however, after, um, uh, super pastor Gabriel snow, 
uh, locked his megachurch, uh, locked the doors of his megachurch and would not allow people inside while the city flooded during a hurricane. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, I kind of got wood and I was like, you know, these, these, <laughs> these people, these people need to be taken down. I'm going to expose the corruption that no one else, no one else notices how corrupt these mega churches are, but old Wyatt, um, because I had a very inflated sense of my own intelligence. Um, so anyway, I, I, I went and I went and I looked into, uh, various ones and specifically Gabriel Snow, as I said, he, he locked people out of church that didn't sit well with me. Um, I found pretty quickly that, uh, that donations were not his only scam and that the uh there seemed to be a much deeper connection to shady business dealings that would affect a lot more people than the people donating to his uh his shitty pulpit fund uh so i went to go find evidence of that so i could turn it over to the proper authorities um however upon finding those proper authorities and turning over evidence uh they held the uh, the FBI agents I gave that information to held me down while Gabriel Snow stabbed me in the lungs. Nice, like um. So I'm I'm mad. Um, because who would have thought the government was going to be corrupt too, right? Um, why Wyatt, would you say you're mad as hell? No, Ooh. no, I don't cuss. <laughs> um. Why? Why it is? Why it is a straight edge? Uh, <laughs> at least I can't. I can't and do Wyatt, that. Why it? Oh, I just I well I can't even do a straight face. I'm like, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> no drugs, no alcohol, no sex, no cigarettes, no profanity, poor <laughs> gourd. No, um, I I but uh, he looks exactly like Frank. From uh, Donnie Darko? No, <laughs> man. Now I can't think of it. The 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 game where you're a reporter in a mall full of zombies. Dead Rising. Dead Rising. Yes, he is Frank from Dead Rising. Uh, luckily, luckily his his wound and internal bleeding aren't really visible. Um, he, like if you picture a a New York reporter, you're picturing Quiet. So, like, the hat has a little tag in it that says press? Yep. Cool. And uh, he has a, a a nice camera strapped around his uh, his neck. Like, love it. Clicky. Yeah. I love how all of you take pre-gens and put spins on it that I'll never predict. So, that is <laughs> fantastic and wonderful. Yeah, he originally just had me as a dog walker. A dog walker? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I th- it's like I a day he couldn't handle more dogs. than two dogs at a time because <laughs> you know, there's this time with three dogs, and we're not going to get into. But there's a restraining order against. Oh worms. my god! I man, I have to say, uh, at KillerCon, Max Booth punked me so hard. Uh, he's like, "Hey, I'm going to talk about some stuff. I'm going to just, I'm going to like gesture you over, and you'll come over, and like it'll be great." I'm like, "Okay, that's fine. Cool. I'll help you out." And then Max started talking about an organization called Namcla. Oh my gosh. And in a M C L A. I'll let uh, I'll let you fill in the uh the holes there. For our international audience uh, No, they don't, don't, need to don't know explain about that it. Shit. it. You can don't let them look that up. No, they don't, don't need to. It. I know. It's, That's what I'm saying. Don't yeah, don't yeah. If you don't know uh, what it is, don't don't Google that. <laughs> you, you will get local law authority knocking at your door. Um all right, so again, this game is very much focused on all these characters building their narrative, and we will get into that with a first little series of questions to set to set the the set and setting, and then from there things will unfold naturally. And in case anyone is curious, a group of whites is called awake. Okay, which is actually. Very, very clever, if you think about it. So many content. You know what? 
the hell with it. I'm white. I can do it. I thought a group of whites was called a cracker barrel. <laughs> uh, I thought it was called no. a clan. A group? No, a group of whites is a Karen. Oh, a Karen. I like that. <laughs> yeah. No, there's a queen of Karens. A clan right. of Karens. All right. Yeah. Um, they called Karens. no the the W I G H T ones though. What is the group called again? White uh, awake. Awake. I like that. Yes. Another it's also theater. awake of vultures. I think. Is it? Yeah. Or something like that. I feel like a uh, a group of vultures should be this like gargling wet meat sounds. <laughs> um, all right. So the forces of of hell, of the underworld, the afterlife, they have brought you back to life. You have been filled with so much hate and misery and desire to have vengeance that things have noticed you and brought you back. Each of you have some type of almost phantasmic creature, like one of you have said, almost like a familiar that sometimes you get glimpses of that leads you onward in your quest for revenge and is in following them that the three of you have found each other and realize that you all share this core nemesis. Somehow, some way, Gabriel Snow has betrayed or flat out just murderized you in a very gruesome fashion and that was what ties you together you are denied eternal rest until you get your vengeance in whatever form that is whether it be law or bloody retribution so that being said tell me a little bit more about where we are first off what year is it 2009 2009 does that sound good for the group yeah. he said it it is it is law I, it, it has to be consensual yeah i'm into it okay yeah sex is involved <laughs> all right and what city are you is this a real world or a fictitious city i think we're in houston i think i set that up nicely all right so you are in the city of houston and tell me about the neighborhood you're in Ooh, i i, I got this one um, I even got a place for us to like apparate if you want. I love it. Go on. <laughs> okay. All right. So I mentioned that my family owns a funeral home and, uh, it just so happens that all three of our bodies are being stored in the, um, morgue of the funeral home, the Cannon family funeral home, which being a funeral home is like this one creepy building with this big ass cemetery behind it. I'm sure you have a couple of those in Houston, Houstonians. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's where, that's where we are. Does that sound good to everyone? Sounds good to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm liking this setup. I like this, uh, this roll out of the morgue. And uh, for legal reasons, Gabriel Snow is not Joel Olstein. <laughs> <laughs> true story true story back when i was a um drinking man uh a hard drinking man i used to sometimes drink until like i don't know seven or eight in the morning and so like i'd be i'd be catching like joel austin just as i was like shit housed and uh it, it made for some good times um yeah that cat is bogus as hell I can't imagine being intoxicated in any form and watching Joel Steen. I feel like his teeth the only way just to do make it. nightmares. I <laughs> used to go to Patreon. We I will. used to set my uh, my dorm's TV to the old angry Catholic lady yelling channel yeah. right before going to class. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't tell what's more interesting: your white's backstories or your backstory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on! I'm like. Oh. Um, so <sighs> you find yourselves cold and clammy, scraping yourselves. Well, I guess you've come together and you're here. You're not just scraping yourselves out of the morgue for the first time, but you are beginning to formulate your plan of how you're going to get revenge upon Gabriel Snow. How do you think that you would go about that? Uh, are we in character? 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, real quick. So yeah. our uh, equipment list that we have, uh, obviously I wouldn't have my motorcycle in a morgue. Or you do probably I have it parked it? outside. That's what's brought you, like... Uh, well, I have motorcycle too. We could motorcycle duel. <laughs> Get the sticks and in cows. this game, you either start off with a motorcycle or a hideout. Oh, I forgot to check whether I had one or the other. I think no, I no, just you made have... up a hideout. No, you. I literally gave you. Uh, well, I said it was an abandoned funeral home. So the fact that you just made it a oh, so operating one works. So you were feeding on my brainwaves. Whoa! I did not do that before. I and that. your part of your equipment is funerary makeup. So if you don't want to use yes. chicken wire and, and play doh, you. Could. Oh no, no no! That's what I was using. The I saw the funerary makeup part, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm." I don't know if anyone's ever seen a like a not very well done makeup job on a body. <laughs> But like, yes. <laughs> I've been to a funeral. So um, you're saying it's an industry term, chicken wire and play-doh? Yes, yeah, that's an industry term John? for the materials yes. we use. Oh, hold on, hey, 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 hold up, guys. We'll we'll take a step back. We'll rewrite that. So okay, um, yeah, okay. Are we? Do we want yeah, to talk? Uh, let's just move past things we should let's avoid. Move past the makeup. All right, okay. so we'll go ahead and let you scratch that off your equipment since you're not using it, and give yourself some other type of item maybe uh operating tools or something is that okay yeah is that good with you john yeah 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 i just okay. I, right. it's fine for me how i just don't want to have a conversation about no, no, it no 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 i'm just saying that way it doesn't come up again thank you for employing that mm -hmm. all right so are there other people here <clears throat> in the funeral home like is this currently operating or is this an off day let's have it be an off day just for ease of us like playing the scene <clears throat> All right, so it's an off day, and you're making your plans. And, and you said we we had like we had ma made acquaintance with each other in hell, and like we all knew each other's kind of basic idea already, or right? It's here. You well, you I think the confluence here. of both um, our intertwined, like, what do you want to call it, murderer, I guess, and yes. our and our intertwined destiny and being in the same funeral home was probably enough of like a. Um, what do you call it? Synchronistic proximity that it like kind of caught the the powers of the great beyond's attention. Makes and they sense were like, to me. Ooh, the situation is just right. And yeah. So I have an idea, this being the family funeral parlor. Um, I'm willing to bet that we have Gabriel Snow's contact information in the office, like Rolo decks. Did they still use those in 2009? It's 2009, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in the Rolodex. Or it's in, like, a Blackberry. Yes! Or it's, oh. your, no. it's your family's, <laughs> like, funeral home, so you, like, you, can, you know the password, right? The funeral mm -hmm. homes haven't, like, aren't, like, like, super up to, to tech standards, usually. No, uh, especially not... Dead bodies not, have changed a lot. Okay? Especially not a family funeral home. The industry's getting so standardized, and, you know... They're crushing out the little guy, the independent operators. So Rolodex is about the most high tech thing in that office. To be honest, <laughs> got a maybe Commodore a phone. 64. There's probably a phone. Yeah, Commodore 64. But you know, that, that's for the the little morning kids. Like I'll let them play that, and sometimes they feel better. But most no. times they just grow up to go on internet forums and yell at people. Now let me ask a question, though, guys. Let me ask a question. Like. Uh... As far as far as as far as Father Snow knows, uh, we're corpses. I mean, we are, I mean we we are corpses, but uh, he don't he don't know that we's walking around now, right? Like uh, I don't know that we need to make a big old plan here. We just we, what are you gonna do? Shoot you again? <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying. Like I don't know that we need a plan. It's all I don't care if there's, I die again. There's no points in this game, but I will give you a bonus point, John. If somewhere you work in, I'm your Huckleberry. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can. <laughs> so, so we've we've got the uh, the lot for the probate vehicles that are still being sorted out by the Houston powers that be. So y'all's motorcycles are back there. The big question here, once we've plucked. Mr. Snow's contact information out of the old Rolodex is uh, 
who's going to let me ride uh, behind them on their bike? Oh, my bike's got plenty of room, man. I, I all the time, man. You gotta. Sweet. So I'm gonna snuggle up behind. It's what not was even... it? it was uh the first day was it, no, it wasn't Huck. It was uh something Wyatt. Wyatt that's right. It was a yeah. such an Americana name. I was like, yeah. Uh, that's by the way. The that's old... part of the reason I'm going as far like Yankee as I can with him. <laughs> so, and like, his grandfather for... just constantly rolling around in his grave. <laughs> for specific reference, there is a chart in the back of the book of suggested names. All of your names, unless some of you changed it, were pulled from their like the suggested chart of names. Oh man, I'm 100 percent like going to be performing um, under the name Max Cannon moving forward. I, I like that <laughs> in, it was. I had films. put down Connor, and you changed it to Cannon, and I'm like, yep. he's a loose cannon. <laughs> no, um, Max Cannon. Like I think it. Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, boom. Yep. Boom. <laughs> So all right, even if was you boom goes have... the dynamite still a catchphrase in two thousand and nine? I um, I don't think so. I think it. I think <laughs> boom goes the dynamite died out in like oh one or oh oh. <laughs> well, how how old are we all respectively? I would imagine I'm like in my early thirties. Yeah, probably same here. Although IRL, I would have yeah. Let's not get into it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we still say "boom goes to dynamite." We don't know any better. <laughs> even, yes. even though we don't say it, it's in our hearts. That's yes. the bomb. dot com. Yeah, yeah, it's the bomb. Dot com. Man, ought nine. Those were the days. Uh, back, back when DC could still make a decent comic book movie. <laughs> I need a pack of Lucky Strikes and a PBR. <laughs> Your character does have a pack of smokes and a lighter. Well, they're Lucky Strikes. They certainly are. The big question with the luckies is filter or no filter. Are you a, 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 no filter? Why would you Perfect. like? Perfect. They're, they're not meant to have them. They didn't need them. The filter's the bad part for you because soft it pack. gets the plastic part. Yeah, soft in pack lungs. unfiltered. I love it. Yeah, microplastics will kill you. Yes, That's they why will. why you smoke unfiltered cigarettes. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> it makes all the sense in the world. If you do search the office, there is that roll the decks and this is a number that would be there. So there's no check needed for that because it's a common enough information to find the the phone number and the address for the megachurch. My white takes the form of a spider. He's tap dancing on top of that Rolodex. It's kind of adorable. <laughs> so each of you have a special ability that your totem gives you. It doesn't let you change into that form. It gives you that ability. So you are you have that ability as a from your spider totem creature, you can climb walls and stuff. So instead of being a small spider stepping on the Rolodex, you would be like this regular size undead <laughs> white, just like <laughs> flopping around on a desk. Uh, okay. I do. I do want you to do that though. <laughs> I, I do too. I, <clears throat> like this. It's even I'm worse playing. because, at, like, because I'm sticky, everything's sticking to me as I'm flailing. <laughs> so I'm just getting oh, like. No deeper and deeper and like bound up to get like do i stick to myself like yeah why isn't spider-man always stuck to himself anyway yeah uh rolodex we got the thing and uh we're ready to ride with me maybe with an erection riding behind john i mean the vibrations Probably. alone are gonna make that happen it's true also proximity i'll be honest so yeah. since you've come out of the freezer what time of day is it? Yeah, it's oh, three an off in the morning, day, so it's probably a weekend. So, ooh, three in the morning is perfect. That's crime per time between yeah. two and three. Yeah. So Saturday morning, three a.m. is what I'm hearing. Sounds good. Yeah. Church in the morning. When they find his remains, it's going to be a real, uh, a real eye opener. Should my, we? Oh, I, I left that out. My uh, my character lost his faith because of that uh, evangelist fella. So I'm like, I've got a, a real like uh, burning need to desecrate in my heart uh, as well as destroy. Just being upfront about that. Uh, should, should we call the, the priest to make sure that he's up now that we have his phone number? Why yeah, would we, I, uh, why would we uh, warn him that we're coming? I feel like I have to provide a point of clarification here. Having been 
the only person on the pod I, I think who was Catholic at one point. I I've heard. Catholic. Oh, okay. Because I've heard father and priest, but I thought we established he did a mega church, and that's like hundred percent a Protestant thing. Um, Oh, so yeah. if you can change, so that could be part of it as we get in more information about what your experiences are. First Catholic megachurch. I have it as a pastor. Like, how do all those people go to uh, like communion? That's that that wouldn't work. I mean, the first Catholic megachurch is called Rome. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> Good joke. Basilica of Saint yeah, Peter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's true. That the Pope does do like sacrament for all the people in the crowd. That's true. Yeah. Um, so I no, I, I totally think it's probably a Protestant thing, but I also think that uh, at the very least, Wyatt, who considers himself to be a Catholic, probably just calls every person that, that is like in front of a large group of people preaching "Father." Only, only you'd pronounce it "Father." Father. Father. Hey, hey Father. Can we, can we, can we talk about these uh, discrepancies? <laughs> so three in the morning. Saturday, and you are in a, what section of town? A good section of town, bad section of town. It Where was a great that? section of town thirty years ago. I, I know that. Yeah, the that church. The church, church however, on. is going to be in a very good section of town. Yeah, the graveyards, generally speaking, for like, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend that our family funeral home, because it was once a thriving business but is now a failing one, is like uh, kind of in that district of town that like is on the skids and uh so but as as you pointed out the mega church would be well it might be in a good part of town or it might be in like its own little weird like with its own parking lot and like freeway exit oh, and like oh it definitely has that but like yeah. on the outskirts of like like almost in the suburbs yeah 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 where it's most uh convenient for where it's almost its own town yeah or it's next to the abandoned Toys R Us. Did you know, by the way, just breaking it real quick, that uh, who's the bucket guy? Jim Baker, right? Uh, yeah. He um, has basically like a compound now um, where people pay to live in a condo where they literally open their front door and are inside of the church, like of his <laughs> televangelist show. And I thought to myself, like, that is about as close to like – well, actually, now that I think about it, it, it might be fascinating for me to go and live there for a while just to see if, like, see how much, how long it would take me to get kicked out. Probably kicking up in the front door new to do it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that would be like your third cult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. All my cults. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, do we do we call uh, the not Catholic priest that I will insist that is a priest because my character doesn't care to learn the difference? That's cool. We can call him a priest. Um, no, you guys call him whatever you want. Yeah. I'm just saying my character would not care. We'll I respect it. Fada. Uh, <laughs> so on the Rolodex, you have a line for the church, and then you have a 24-hour prayer line for <laughs> the bereaving. Fuck, I hate mega churches. <laughs> oh, yeah, call the prayer line. I want to call him right now. All right, let's let let's let Paschke do the. I think we line. should do this on speakerphone and actually call Joel Olstein's prayer line. <laughs> <laughs> if we thought of this before, I like, mean, there's no we... reason why you couldn't hold up to the phone. I mean, this is. <laughs> I will say, as the GM who's normally cranky about derailing things, there's part of me that's like, what? I don't know. This is. It'd be fucking. I'm lit, torn. Dude. Oh I'm just imagining God. some like late night old like fifty year old woman. That is, Fucker, I don't. I care. was gonna say Fucker. like, yep, yeah. that's exactly. I just imagine like, um, <laughs> you uh, work a prayer uh, line, Mr. you Pash, take the dangers that come with the D6, territory. Or, excuse me, which, break. which in this case is me yelling at you in a terrible New York <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're we're under, we're under the father's corruption. Okay, we know, we know. We're, we're, just we're one. gonna we're gonna come. No, we're no. gonna come with the. We're gonna come with the sauce, okay? I roll. I I'm rolled Huckleberry. Hut? You rolled what? Uh, <laughs> a hut. One point. You rolled a hut. Uh, so, so, Drake, what did you say you rolled? I rolled a five. Are we? All is right. that for sex? Because my sex is five. So oh. you pick up the phone and you dial the twenty-four hour like like prayer line, and you wait five rings before like a very tired like woken up in the middle of the old like night old woman picks up the phone and just says, Oh, <clears throat> you have called the 
<clears throat> Pastor Gabriel Snow, 24-hour prayer line. How may I pray for you, my child? What is what is bothering you? Fight her. You're going to pray? I'll what pray do you pray you. for? I pray for what's ailing you. Tell me, what what is bothering you? Nothing ails me anymore. Then it's because I died. There... If you would like, <laughs> if you would like, Mister Paschke, to actually call your personal number with a phone call just like this, you can contact him through our website. <laughs> And for a low, reasonable fee, you, a loved one, your boss. <laughs> it's five ninety nine. It's been one ninety nine for every minute after. Ask your parents before calling. No, no, don't. But do have him call your parents. Yeah. Uh, is this Mrs. I'm Trout? I'm picturing my dad's voice, I was gonna my say, dad's face right now. Mr. Paskey, if, if you ever have to talk more on the phone in this game, please use it in that lich voice from your other project. Uh, that's what he's going to see the day, I promise. Uh, so, uh, again, the, the woman is very confused. She's like, did you, did you say that you're, you're, you're dead? Are you hurt? I was hurt. I was hurt by your boss. Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> no, Jesus sent me back. And she's like, I'm coming think, for him. I think I had too much night oil again. <laughs> Gertrude, put the bottle back in the cabinet. <laughs> now, I, I have a quick question. Because uh, I have the numbers pulled up for uh, the ministries. Are we calling the main contact prayer line the customer service? Uh, <laughs> hold the hold the phone. Why on, didn't I this... get what I prayed for? Leg... <laughs> customer service. My parents, my parents watch Joel Olstein every shit. Sunday. If they had any idea that you're about to prank Joel Olstein, like I have no idea. The Legacy <laughs> Giving Channel. Uh, Legacy the Giving. That... Yeah, or... that's the one that's like. Uh... That that one is the one that makes me mad because a lot no, of the no, money this for next these one. places this comes one. from okay planned giving department. Yeah, yeah as I'm in so I'm curious. old. I want to not die, or I want to live on after I die. I will leave you all my money. That's what that's for. I shit you not. Oh. I, I you know the one thing I wish that we had is I always wish that whenever we stream that there was like a little reaction cam like in the corner where we have like the author or authors. And we get to see like what they're reacting to, like us with the various things. So I'm just because I am so curious. I, I don't know most of these people, and I'm so I'm like <laughs> I just be so curious. I want a reaction cam that's pointed at Joel Olstein's face as the four of us take turns kicking him as hard as we can right in the dick. <laughs> so I will I will personally abstain. Some background. I, some background. I had a friend lose family members in that flood that Joel Osteen locked his doors during. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah, it, yeah the whole... If this is, again, if this <laughs> no, is No, no, like no, we're good. Veins so, long, and, so long as I can continue screaming and yelling at Joel Osteen, I'm good to go. <laughs> well, I just I am really t- hate him. <laughs> he is the man with the whitest coat lapels in television or at least he was at one point. Like they 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 are like circus clown, like ridiculous. He makes lapels. Tony Robbins look natural. Yeah, he's a very strange looking fella. Um, so, okay, so there's heavy breathing on the phone as like. Well, I guess from you too, but as I can do this all day. <laughs> they're just breathing. There's just so Gertrude's uh, asleep and he's go not. Ahead they're just and at each other like. <laughs> Go ahead. So, is this? Are you intimidating her? And this would be a violence uh, yeah. check, or yeah, are you trying, trying to. to smooth talk her? And this would be like a sex check. Smooth talk. Smooth talk. Smooth <laughs> talk. Smooth talk. Smooth talk. <laughs> Man, we were making a lot of progress. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, what are you wearing? Oh my <laughs> Jesus! All right. That's a four, uh, which is under five. <laughs> <laughs> oh John's no! To break tonight. I love oh, it. Absolutely. Ah, no. It was me last um, time. Uh, time. I'll, so, 
<laughs> Again. Welcome back, John. <laughs> Again, um, for the low, low rate of four ninety nine so per minute. She, this woman on the other phone, you don't even know her name. She is clearly, you can tell she's struggling. Like you hear. <laughs> The sound maybe of dentures Ugh. becoming slightly unglued. You hear this kind Can't of puzzle, like what? And, and you hear this, like, Lord, are you are you testing me? Is this uh, test that ass? I'm not testing you. I am, dude, dude, dude. She's it, you're getting it in here. She's she's wondering if it's the boss testing her. Meet me outside. And let's find out. So I like the suggestion that we're hearing um, from Max that perhaps maybe she's getting confused and she's thinking it's Gabriel. Are you? How are you actually representing yourself here? Are you just um, prank calling her, or are you actually now trying to like well, shift? If she thinks I'm Gabriel and this can be our end to get inside to get at him, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip it and then uh, when we get there, it. I'm gonna flip a fifty um, year old woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. We'll pull uh, up. Not the first we'll time. kidnap her. Yeah. Uh, Frankly, at the state we're in, hurts. I think one look and Gertrude will be ready to tell us where the boss is at. We can Gertrude's call. The... We can um, refer to the. Th oh yeah, Gertrude's the one who was going to hide the bottle. Whatever. Thank you, so, Frankie. Uh, uh, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, so, all right. <laughs> God. Well, make me one hey, more. So make me one more sex check, and because you made the last one, you do it with two dice. Ooh, that's Ooh. not good. No, no, no. That's better. If you're gonna make it, it because you got two attempts to, to make it correct. If you're gonna make well, a sex check with two d six, it has to be those fuzzy sex dice. I insist. You know you've got oh, a pair around, Pashki. Just my sister-in-law was making silicone molds, <laughs> and so I let her borrow them. I don't think it's going to work, and I think I'm just going to be out the sex dice. But, you know, Ugh. hopefully it gets pulled <laughs> off, and then we'll have some interesting... And then you can Anyways, get off. I rolled a two and a four. Uh, how does that... So that's so your, your sex is five, so both of those are successes. That means you have two successes. So anytime you do a check, you can do it, depending on the situation, you roll one to three dice. Every time you roll equal or the appropriate higher or lower, depending on what you're rolling, sex lower, vines higher, you get additional checks. So one success is that you have made the check, but there is a complication. Two uh, checks or two successes means that it's a normal success, neither good nor bad. And then three successes, you get a bonus. So you have made your sex success full check, <laughs> and uh, the woman says, <clears throat> "Oh, oh, Gabriel, I'm so sorry. I, I must, uh, I must not have had my hearing aids turned all the way up. I, I thought." You said some very strange things. I thought things. she was 50. <laughs> you know, look, you, you, you he said hypothetically 50. I thought ah. that it would make more sense that a older than 50-year-old woman would be taking a prayer call at 3 in the morning. <laughs> a reasonable know, person would take that call. I just imagined like a you know a septenarian. Like on, but we could have it be 50 if you want. Look, it doesn't no, matter no, It's to me. fine. It's fine. Anywho. My character so does she not goes, care. I, I'm so sorry, uh, Gabriel. I thought you were a person calling for uh, for prayers. Why are you calling me on the, the prayer line? Because it's the only safe way for me to get a hold of you. Oh. Now, I need you to meet me outside in a half hour. Out, outside my assisted living home? <laughs> outside of my office. I... I <laughs> In half an hour? Um, yeah. Gertrude, you haven't been sipping on the NyQuil either, have you, dear? I think I need you to take me to church. Hey, guys, I think I have a date for one of you. Take me to church. Do, 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 do. Okay, that's as much as we can Don't play without getting serious. That's, that's perfect music for a montage, <laughs> so you just hang up after that? Yeah. Now, I, I, he yeah, did I'm tell her not to forget her key. I'm trying to remember 2009 level technology. Did we or did we not have like reverse lookup back then? Like, no, you did. Can, yeah, oh, I don't think she knows how to use it given her age. 
No, no, no. My point is, like, if we have the number of, of this guy's residents, you said one of them was the prayer center and the other one was what? The church itself. The church, like the church itself. Office. Okay. So do we think he's at home? It is 3 a.m. So I mean, he's going to show up to his office before he does the sermon, and that'll be before everyone gets Ooh, there. Ooh, that'll be perfect. Assuming she has the key. That'll be perfect. She'll get us inside regardless yeah. if he's there or not. We just have so, to sit around and wait for him to show up. Excellent. All right. We're off to the we're off to uh take a hostage and get the keys and set a trap. Two and hostages. I'm, two hostages. Yeah. Well, you think we're going to All right. Wait. Well, oh, yeah, cuz she's having Gertrude driver. Yeah, two old ladies, perfect hostages. And yes, you heard that here on Wandering Monster, America's Test Table. That's our motto. Get it! Two old Get ladies. It. And by it, we mean two old ladies as hostages. I appreciate I never know how any of these games ever go. I had this whole like gritty, like gothic sexy noir in my head of like yeah, me how too. I, I threaded these like <laughs> things and it's like, no, go get Gertrude. We're gonna hold her at gunpoint. Like <laughs> uh, I love it. All right. So uh, you are so are you then climbing on your motorcycles and yeah. speeding off into the night as a mod? Yeah, we are. Yep. Oh, so oh, Bernard, do you have a do you have a hearse? Oh shit! It is the family establishment. You steal, yeah, you could steal the hearse. We're stealing the hearse. Yeah, Are you, that way that, we can. Yeah, that's that's good. Uh, are all and a you, coffin just for yeah. good measure. Yes. All right. Are cool. all of you riding in it, or are yes. either of you with motorcycles? No, no, no. I no, think no, that, no. Uh, I think all three of us are riding in the hearse with a coffin, I, I an empty coffin one of us, in the back. One of us should take the motorcycle just in case we get attacked. And no, also that's for video game badassery. Logic. Yeah, and yeah. also for badassery. So who Max. wants to who wants to ride? Uh... Uh, I'm going to ride in the hearse because I want to talk to you. Okay, cool. All right. Hey, uh, All right. You know, Max, Max, that that's your place back there, right? That's your your family's place. Well, my family's place, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but listen, you know uh you know how to work it, right? You like you know all the ins and outs of the place, right? You're getting to the crematorium, aren't you? I ain't look. Well, kindred souls, right? You yeah. know what I'm thinking. You think I'm I do? Thinking, I'm thinking like, look, fully know, operational, ready to go. I need push I wanna, operation. I want to get. I want to get the evidence. I want to get it to people who will actually do something with it. I want to shut down the thing. But let's not kid ourselves. We're going to hurt the man. Yes, we we're going to hurt the man. We're going to kill the man. Um, <laughs> here's where here's where my heart's at. We hurt the man real bad, and then we put him in a box and put him in the crematorium. And that's how he meets his end in in the, in the flames, like we was living down there, right? I agree on one condition. What, what's that, to, friend? We have to mutilate him bad enough to leave something for his congregants to find when the doors open. In the oh, morning. you mean like like put his face on the cross or something? Ooh, that's good. I like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, you got something better face? than like I'm all ears. But uh, that's that's what my, head, my that's what my heart's at. That's what my heart is singing to my ears. Yep, I'm hearing it too. I mean, what we're the in Texas, fuck is so this you've accent? Gotta... I like it. <laughs> I it's fine. What was that, Drake? Uh, so we're going to Texas Chainsaw Massacre him where we take the face off and put it on Jesus? Yes. Ah, yes! <laughs> we're in I Texas. wish I weren't so actually excited by that statement. But <laughs> you just saw a real reaction of joy from me. That was a uh, I love here's, it. Here's I'm not there. sadness. I have actually never seen any in that franchise. Uh, but, I, will, uh, I will admit I don't like them. The uh, first one is especially fucked up because... Like if you mm-hmm. read the the details about it's the biggest financial success in movie history to this day because they spent like mom. they spent like a thousand dollars to make it and over the years it's made just a gazillion dollars yeah um, but it was so low budget that the director like I mean the working conditions were essentially torture for the actors in it like yeah. he would keep them doing scenes over and over and over in one hundred and twenty degree heat with like no air conditioning and. Like it Rotting was real. On the table. Yeah, it was real fucked up. Like he was but... essentially Stanley Kubricking it for one of the yeah. worst looking movies ever. <laughs> yeah, well, I disagree. But the reactions are looking. pretty convincing. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, classic game. Love it. We're here for and, a game. <laughs> as you are riding your motorcycle, Drake. Your fetish is the Keening of the Damned. Are you blasting some type of? 
music or sing screaming? What is it that you are doing to kind of fulfill that itch? All right, so it's it's two thousand and nine. Um, Do you plug in your iPod into your iPod uh, speakers? Man, to the o- iPod you plug in your aux cord. There's like <clears throat> silver. I still thing. use the aux cord in my car. What was that? Uh, uh, sorry, Drake. Uh, so yeah, um, he would have a Zoom. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Why? I, I supported the idea, not the execution, not the actual product, but I liked right. the notion that there was a Zoom. Hold on. Uh, okay, it was around in 2009. It checks out. I'm so listening angry. to. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, probably like the the playlist that I made before I died of the Misfits. Alice Hell Cooper, yeah. White Fuck Zombie, yeah. yes, um, I know, I know. I'm Megadeth. It. Yes, this is really good. White Zombie, got it. Also, my my ability is echolocation because yeah. of bats. Yep. So, cool. can I be driving without my headlights on, just in the dark? Oh, that's <laughs> Only if you stick your head out and yell. I, I imagine that you just like start like blasting like King Diamond and you have this like falsetto yeah. scream into the night that you're just like yeah. neck, just Welcome oh. home, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> so you're able to get yourself to the church in half an hour. On time. You know, I since part of my job is to make obstacles, I'm going to make the, both of you drivers make the appropriate check, either sex or violence, depending if you're aggressively driving, recklessly, or if you're very stealthily, sleekly driving your vehicle to there to make sure there's no... Um, <clears throat> my white you. ability is the ability to like move sneaky and stealthy. Ooh. Can I give him a bonus die? You, you actually can. Now, part of this is that you need to argue with me if you deserve to have more dice. So in Drake's case, he's already established that he has echolocation, which is a perk to ability. So if you were to ask for it, can I have a bonus die on that? I would absolutely grant that. Uh, well, my bonus die would be the fact that I've been driving this. I learned to drive in this hearse. It's the family, you know, hearse. I can... All right, know... so you would get a bonus die for that. So with... Your assist and your natural, you would have three dice to roll. Now, keep Excellent. in mind, if you roll that stat exactly, that you are able to have that intrusion. You could ask, you get the involvement of your totem creature. But I'm seeing some consternation from Drake. What happened when you rolled? Uh, my first die was a six, and my second die was a five. Which, I don't know what stat you're checking. Which one uh, are you checking? So, I would think violence, because uh, while my motorcycle is sexy... I would not like to sex my bike. Well, keep in mind that when you're testing violence, you're trying to roll equal or higher to succeed. So both of those dice succeeded, and that means that you get there with no consequences whatsoever. But let's see if your compatriots are as successful. So were you rolling with sex or violence? Sex, since we're trying to be all sneaky-like. All right. Um, I rolled a two and a four, which were both a pass on the first one because my stat's a five. And let me see. The second one is a three. So two, three, four, all passed. All right. So not only do you get there on time, you get there and you're so stealthily that not even Drake sees that you've gotten there first. You've just parked nice. the hearse, that you've gotten there quiet, and neither Gertrude or the other woman, the woman presumably you've spoken to the foom on the phone, has no notice. And you see coming up the road, you hear this like like this high pitched like shrieking and like soon after you hear this crescendo of whatever bass tinny bass is coming out of your motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, uh I would think though, like when I get closer, I'd probably kill the music. Oh, okay. They have... Yeah, can it, can that's I ask fine. You, one would, you would hear it, then it'll just come rumbling. I'm that's... really stupid, and I've never actually like been on a motorcycle in my life. Uh, do do they actually have like external speakers and sound no. and shit? They do, and they're stupid because you hear them oh. in the car next to them. Uh, like, so I, I live next to a major road, and Pete, I hear motorcycles all the time that have them like blared up, like so loud that 
a block, like blocks away, I can hear exactly what they're listening to because they have it so loud that they can hear it while they have their like. That's fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah. my so my friend Zach, who's like a big motorcycle guy, has a very high tech helmet that has like basically um, Beats level Bluetooth headphones like built into the padding inside Beats of it. By Drake, something like that. And uh, he, so his like he's got incredible, you know. But I was like can you hear cars coming? And he was like, I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> Super safe. Uh, <laughs> all right. So tell me how this scene plays out. You have super Ooh. stealth and then I got it. want to be stealthy, Drake. So, so uh, here's, here's what I'm thinking. I think that we should set up a little, um, a scene for the, the old ladies to find uh, just to soften them up before the, you know, getting the keys and so forth. Um, we have the empty coffin with us. We will have an occupant for it eventually. Right now, it doesn't have one. I think that we should park the hearse, leave the back open, leave the coffin like out as though it has fallen out with like no lights on, all four doors open, just very suspicious and creepy looking with me inside the coffin with my fucked up head with all the like, you know, and, and uh, yeah, we'll, I'm sorry, moving past that. And then uh, that, you know, when they open it up, I'll kind of go boo. And you guys can spring out of the hearse and grab them. Um, I do not spend a lot of time thinking about how to scare old ladies. I promise. Um, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you say that, but you know the shitty thing know. is I have no alibi for like any crime ever because I live alone and just like I guess I could use a like a Discord transcript as proof that I wasn't off scaring somebody. Right hey, now. You so, could you well, can use Discord from your phone though. Uh, I don't. Ha- well, yeah, I, I could claim I don't have it on my phone. But, ah, yeah. So why are you going along with this plan? Yes. Because I am a giver. All right. <laughs> Where are you hiding while you have your friend hiding in a casket or the coffin? I think the two of them should crouch in the dark, all doors open, hearse. Uh, like, I'm where... laying on top of the, the van, Ooh, like flat on top. Yeah. All right. And then without any knowledge of what's happening to the hearse, not even knowing it's there, you're driving up and you're seeing Gertrude and this other person and... Unless, are you, is your hearse within sight of the old ladies? Because I said, you again, you're stealthy. Well, like, we arrived before them, right? Right. The point okay, is... Okay, I, I see how... I, I, yeah. I see what you said. You got so there they, first, they before the old up. ladies. Yeah. That makes sense. I wanted Since to basically you said I got the bonus on if, all three. Right. Gets. If Drake so, would see your hearse, that was really what yeah. I was trying to get. Yeah, at, he so. would. He would. Okay. And he, I'm assuming he gets I could echolocate a hearse. Yeah, exactly. Right. And you would be able to identify that there is... You're on top of it as well. Yes. So the the conspiracy is as follows: um, the the hearse is there for these uh, helpless senior citizens who volunteer, praying for uh, woe begotten folk. Um, we we've left them a mysterious and somewhat spooky thing to look into, and uh, then all of their worst, like I'm going to hell, Jesus is going to get me, nightmares are going to come true. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna by to tell evangelist i that's my want, bu- that's my entire right. bucket list so you have this parked and then <clears throat> so coming up in like a really old blue like buick um you know it's kind of backfiring a little bit you see this car of two little old ladies drive up uh park and then taking some time adjusting themselves getting out of the seat they you know, amble their way towards the hearse that's like parked on what on the lawn in front of the church. You know, the city's probably in a drought, and here's this immaculate lawn, and you've just torn <laughs> ruts right through it. The doors are open. That's and... a great detail, by the way. <laughs> I figured, <laughs> and um, you, this whole lady's like looking around. And the other one's like is whispering to the other one. You can't hear them out of out of earshot. Um, Drake would probably hear with the echo echo location. Like I don't see Gabriel, and this isn't his car. What's I, how much Nyquil did you have? I don't even have that much. <laughs> so much. I was out of cool. melatonin. All right. So um, <laughs> they they peer into the back of the hearse, and unless you intervene, Drake. 
if they're peering in the back, I mean, and I, I know the situation, so it's time to shove them in. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, All right. in the back. I was going to scare them first. <laughs> you Not know what? Uh, a it, complication it, happens, and this is a complication. <laughs> and so I like I like how this okay. is going. So, <laughs> so yeah, like you, you got to scare them, and then like they hear a boom <laughs> as I rev the engine <laughs> and start coming at them. I uh, I weep off the top, uh, probably on ooga booga booga y'all, y'all. Howdy. <laughs> Then you should have added I'm your partner. And whatnot. Um, <laughs> all right. So I am going to. So the prime scarer is going to be primarily. Well, it's going to be two of you. So Max, give me your violence check since you're using, you know, force. To, you're scaring. You're inducing fear. So. Happy to do, do a violence check. Do you either time. one of you want to roll, or do either you and Wyatt want to roll regular violence checks, or working together, do one of you want to roll at two dice? Oh, you're talking to the other Charles. Got you. I said Wyatt. Sorry, yeah. Wyatt, Wyatt and Max. Yeah. Um, did I say something different? No. I don't know. Okay. I'm probably confused. No, I I'm... thought you were talking Charles though. Oh, okay. I'm... I uh like I said I'm I'm real good at being stealthy. <laughs> so while they are while while they are distracted by um uh Drake's bike, I'm actually just going to drop down behind them like between them and the the hearse, grab them and sling them in. <laughs> So they're distracted, oh. and I have my uh, totems like super stealthy thing. All right. Uh, so then I'm going to guess that uh, I'm imagining with the three of you working in concert that this should be a max roll me a violence check at three, three dice. Alrighty. Uh, am I rolling as well? Well, because you're shoving, and he's. I'm, I thought that part of this was Max wanting to scare and like kind of control them emotionally. The fact that you've you've tossed them in. And yeah, yeah, you've got, yeah. Th that's what okay. I, I'm trying to okay. figure. No, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Not one. So I, I think the coffin lid fails to open, and I just no, no. You want to roll though? So you have th uh, basically the thing is you 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 have three separate rolls, and each one can give you a success okay. or a failure. All so right. So you're rolling gotcha. three of those. Yeah. And the second one is a six. And attempt number three is another nat one. So Nothing how many but successes do you have? One success. All right. So you I thought, have... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm confused. I thought we were trying to roll low. So this you is... have sex and violence. When testing sex, you're rolling equal or lower to succeed. When testing but violence, violence is you're rolling equal okay. or Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so... That means you have one success, which is a complicated success. The three of you have created so much fright in such a short amount of time. <laughs> I knew it. That one of the old women just instantly starts <laughs> to go into a heart attack. It's like gasping. Now um, I feel guilty. And, just like the other and that's just weird because like, it's a game. But even so. <laughs> Beatrice, no. Um, Beatrice, no. So uh, the one named Beatrice, you know, like, like blue haired, you know, uh, septuagenarian. Yeah, uh, my girlfriend. Clutch at her chest and just gasp like a fish out of water. Where the other one's like wailing at the death of her friend, but also the fact that like here's this hideous thing with the mangled face that's just like screaming infernal damnations where you have motorcycle man outside and other person's like beating on the doors screaming something in a, in a <laughs> southern drawl um so here's and... something here's something that i'm gonna do um like i would like to try to perform cpr on beatrice which is not going to be a pleasant experience for her because like you know there's a lot of makeup on me that's gonna get on her and it's you know not great but uh i think that would qualify as not violence uh so sex in the loosest sense, but I'm going to see if I can't revive her. And if I can't, oh, well, you know, but I'm going to try. All right. So you're going to perform 
CPR omniatrice yeah. yeah. as this thing from hell that's like, I'm going to take you back to hell. And you're just like, yeah. you're trying to like yeah. revive Beatrice. <laughs> Stay with me until I can take you to hell. <laughs> I'm going to take yeah. you down there myself. I'm, I'm afraid you're that her soul is going to escape into heaven is what I'm so pissed about. No, I'm just kidding. No, I just, uh, that scene is a, insane. That is a five, which I believe is a big old fail on, um, on a check of Wait, uh, I, have to, I have to look at what that's a, stats, that's an uh, exact one actually. I think no, that's. Let me check. I think that that's a direct match. Yeah, it is. All I right, rolled exactly so not my only stat. that, you so when you roll your stat exactly, you get a a basically the totem spirit of yours materializes to give you wisdom. So as you are almost kind of fighting against your infernal nature to kill something. You are going out of your way to like bring life into this world. It smiles like a little spider kind of crawls out from the sagging like ceiling material of the, the, the hearse and like kind of freezes time. And you can ask this spirit thing a question. Oh, I'm asking at the address of, uh, or, or the current location of, of our, the current, uh, this is tricky because with demons you have to be very precise. I I would like to know the current exact location of um what's his nuts snow something snow Gabriel Snow Gabriel Snow. So you through this kind of you stare in the eight eyes of this thing and each one kind of gives you like a little like a montage glimpse of like an intersection a road. And you start to see street signs that are leading up to a giant condo. Up at Perfect. the top, you start to see kind of that like t -t 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 like super yeah. smash of cuts all the way up to like the top penthouse, like the suite. And he is comfortably in a four poster bed, asleep. We'll even look a little fucking night camp. Yeah, uh, in his probably on top of a big bed. on a big pile of money. Yep. You see that there is a scantily clad woman far younger than him in the same bed as him. This guy sucks for days. All right, uh, let's let's. Uh, do you guys want to just let Gertrude and Beatrice go? Lesson learned and all that. <gasps> I, I I ain't got no beef with either of them. <laughs> I love My how character. that. No. In the chat, I love that there was the question of, did anyone check to see if Beatrice had a DNR? <laughs> <laughs> Thank like, you, bodily autonomy. As, as you have exactly done the chest right. compressions, like you like pull out this car <laughs> that says, like, do not do resuscitate. Not resuscitate. <laughs> um, so you just, like, shatter this woman's ribs and pull out the uh, do not resuscitate order, you know. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that would be with a complication, though. This, she, she, this was she, a this was a success plus. You, well, you had only one success, though. Oh, that's right. So uh, you brought her back, and she's like breathing this Nyquil breath <laughs> in your face. Um, yeah, uh, uh, she's just like I was supposed to die, and she's just like bleeding and hemorrhaging internally from the multiple puncture wounds at, from her at shattered which point ribs. I tell her it's probably not far away. And, and we just leave uh, her there in the dirt. So, so I was going to say, tell keys. me. All right, so you take the keys from them, from the church, from, from Beatrice. Take also, all the we keys. Don't wanna... I bet that they've got access to, you know, um, the Reverend Snow's uh, quarters. Then again, maybe not. They're just like prayer line but, volunteers. But you haven't told the group yet whether or not uh, about the, the condo. Uh, so our current plan has been outlined oh, to yeah. wait around for for him gotcha. here. Let me so enlighten we... y'all then. Yeah, I'm gonna tell yeah. you guys that I have the location of the condo, and it's up to you uh, what these women's fate is. Um, me having thoroughly broken Beatrice. Uh, yeah, Gertrude is in y'all's scaly demonic hands. I feel like so, uh, I feel like we're in the Coliseum. It's like a you know. So tell me how it goes. I think that's a thumb up, actually. Yeah, I I, I got no feelings one way or the other. Like, uh, all right, I can right. grab my baseball bat. 
<laughs> off the bike with the barbed okay. wire around the front. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Are you choosing <laughs> violence? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, talk me out of it, but I've no, grabbed the no, baseball bat and I'm ready to Deegan them. <laughs> I, I mine is not to be the angel whispering in your ear, my friend. My faith is a broken thing. Uh, I had to I just, explain I just broke an old woman all to pieces. So I had yeah. to explain to someone the other day that what I wrote wasn't that terrible because it wasn't what they thought it was. It was in fact abuse of a corpse. So <laughs> I'm not going to stop anyone from doing anything because I have no room to judge. I ain't got yeah. a leg to stand on. Hey man, dead's dead, you know. Dead is dead. Look, we're going to have to do something with either the bodies or the live people who are going to alert the authorities that we jumped them. But are the authorities going to come track us down in hell? The, the, they yeah. can stop us from getting our revenge, which That's is our, our job. That's true. I feel like we could go through a whole pack of cops, but uh, yeah, might as well. Might as well. Let's finish job. On that on that note, how would you guys feel about going through a whole pack of cops after this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have the Blues Brothers soundtrack on my Zoom. <laughs> he, has, he has he has the Blues Brothers. Excuse but me, unfortunately, did you say Zoom? but unfortunately, it's the Blues Brothers 2000 soundtrack. Oh, hey, oh no, yeah, hey, we kill I don't want to. I don't want to hear any. I don't want to hear any. Slander against Blue Brothers 2000, especially not after the man said he has a Zoom. Okay. Okay. All Holy right. Shit. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm afraid that the her Be Beatrice's time has come. So, you you can nag in her all you like, and then we'll we'll toss the two of them in the back of the uh, the the hearse with the empty so coffin, <clears throat> and be on our way to the condo. Are Hell, you... maybe maybe the first thing he'll wake up to is those two old ladies in bed beside him. So, are you, Drake, baseball batting? Are you applying yeah, a baseball to you. bat to both of them? Entirely in your hands. Because that would be a three, you know, die check, you know, because they are defenseless old ladies. So, <laughs> I like how he. He referenced that as though each word were a different <laughs> dice that he had to check. <laughs> Defenseless old ladies. Three dice. Uh, so I'm rolling above a two, and I'm really upset that none of them are two, but I've got three, three, and five. So yes. I wish you had rolled six, six, and six. <laughs> uh, that would have so been. You, oh, that would have been pretty that been apropos. Cool. So you are able to silently, like, you crumple them. And you don't leave any evidence that you have, besides the ruts in the immaculate yard, you don't leave a blood splatter, no one sees you, and you get their bodies into the uh, coffin without splattering blood everywhere. It's the perfect crime. Final, <laughs> final touch. Murdering um, two old women with a barbed wire baseball bat is the perfect crime. We got three crime. successes. Final Move touch. Move the car to the no, back no, of the parking yeah. lot. Final touch, actually. Yeah, their car, we moved to the back of the parking lot, but the, final touch is the hearse is going to do a burnout on their immaculate lawn and using um, wheel rut cursive, which, like I said, I, I learned to drive in this family hearse, um, but I, I'm going to just, like, leave a big old fuck you on their lawn in, like, wheel ruts. Uh, then we'll be on our way. Um, do I have to do a, uh, a sex oh, check for that? No, that that okay, I, that cool. is too glorious not to. The, <laughs> yeah. I, the 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 final element of that should be Drake tearing up the DNR, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> or shoving it in her mouth, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. All right, DNR so, right in her mouth. Bam. <laughs> all right, so you are so you've communicated the plan of where this condo is. I heard that correct. Uh, yes, yes, I have. Uh, and I'm also driving the hearse, so I'm just going to lead everybody straight there. Everybody being our friend on the motorcycle. John, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. There's just you, you had a very intense look on your face very close to the camera for a second. That was... Yeah, exactly. I was like, uh, uh... <laughs> it's all good. The um, things that our audio-only listeners will miss <laughs> out on once we go back to uploading our audio well that's just all the more reason on wednesday night starting at 8 30 p.m Check. central to catch us on twitch.tv yeah. slash be, be cool like trick yeah 144 and that's like right and subscribe. yeah 
with a name like Trachea144, it's got to be good. Yeah, okay. just, grab just the remember, trachea. everyone, if you don't like, comment, and subscribe, the, uh, the re alt-religious bots trying to bring down our videos are going to download everything. So you've got to upvote. Like All a wee stuff. swarm of cherubs just so for through the ether. So the fact that you've gotten this this spiritual guidance of how to get to this <laughs> place, I, I will go ahead and all of this wave the driving checks to get to this condo. Sweet. Because um, so, I think I burned the last of my like cool juice on that burnout. Um, that was a pretty dope burnout. That it was very dope indeed. It'll Fuck take you is not easy action. to write with a car, but um, it's not. I pulled it off. It wasn't All right, even cursive. He had to jump the hearse. <laughs> 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 so, you... true facts for for our gentle viewers and or listeners: there was a time in my life when I had considered like looking into mortuary science because dead people don't bother me, and um, it seemed like easy money to me. It's not. It's it's like actually pretty steep to get your get all secured and everything. But one of the things that uh, that like drew me into it also was like, oh, I'd get to drive a hearse maybe, and that sounds like something I want to do before I before I ride in one myself. Like I want to take a ride in one before it's the last ride. You know, not my, that I'm being buried, but my cousin bought a hearse off the really? marketplace. Yes, Dope. I'll show you pictures later. At Hell honest to yeah. gosh. That's so awesome. you that is really cool. Thank you for sharing. That is neat. And how yep. odd that here's this character that I made is a random pre gen that is I love it. Trace. Yeah. So you find yourself outside this very fancy condominium building. In fact, it's in a swanky part <clears throat> of town. On the John outside. will be right back. Okay. So he just like blips out. He's like, I'm going to desecrate some corpses and just like hops in the back. <laughs> Yay. Uh, so <laughs> so and being see. a man who's recently like had his faith broken, um, I'd probably laugh about as uproariously as I just did in character in the game, just laughing it up while he's back there desecrating corpses. So as you've kind of approached the scene before you park or anything else, you you do notice that outside the kind of mini building there there are uh, there's like a like a pair of goons that are guarding the front of the condominium. Like this is an upscale part of town, and it's so fancy there is its own private security detail. They don't look to be carrying any type of open carry, but they do have like those thin windbreaker jackets that kind of go over their very wide broad forms i uh <clears throat> i do want to wait for john to get back to give him a chance at the at a bite of this apple oh here he comes do i know right? that ba -ba -ba -ba. Did, did, did he just smack his face into the thing on his way back are you all right did you just like uh face plant on your way back to your seat um no <laughs> of course not <laughs> No I am graceful <laughs> and a respected member of the community. I am the only one Somebody who just that. failed at sex. <laughs> um. <laughs> I I would argue that most roles in my life are violence. <laughs> I, which is why you failed at sex. <laughs> So, John, so we're, we got some violence. goons. We got some goons guarding the door, and I think it's time for combat. <laughs> but do I know them? Oh, good question. Ooh. Oh, um, that is a great question. I really want to kill something with this gigantic crucifix. So, why don't you roll me a sex at two dice to see if you recognize one of these two people? Uh, two and a four. My sex is five, so two successes. You're right. I do have, like, Marcy Playground stuck in my head thanks to that stat in this game. Mm -hmm. All right. So you got, wait, you got two successes then? Uh, five or lower, and I got a four and a two. Yep. All right. I didn't realize that your sex was so high. I guess they... 
Maybe I did have it right. His before. his stats are did my you have stats. It right before? I no, think no, maybe no, no, the no, stats no. were right when I had it before. So, so I should be going two against for the stacks two? and five for viol. Okay. No, no, I mean, no. I was can... right. No, 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 no. It's perfectly fine. Never mind. I was getting his it. stats are just like my stats. Yeah, I was. Just I want to keep getting it chance. backwards. Anyway, yeah, so yes, yeah. so you have um, you recognize, you know, uh, both of the guards from the days that you used to run on, uh, you know, run on the street. Uh, they are. Are they in the gang that you were allied allied with, or from an opposing gang? Hmm. Uh. Uh. Well, no, they're opposing. They're, one of the fuckers is one of the ones that killed me. Nice. All right. So I should kill them. You get that one all to yourself, but can I have the other one? Sure. If it was the one that killed you, then you'll get a bonus die for retribution. So, do you then, seeing this from a distance, do you make this a stealthy approach, or are you just like, I'm going to go balls to the wall? I am I am not... Uh, well, I'll let I'll let um, Pashki take the lead. I don't want to, you know, How does this scene play out? Vengeance. Do you guys want to be the sneaky sneaks, and I'll be the distraction, and just walk up, calling them out? Well, yes, but then I... Oh, you mean sneaky sneak up behind them so that we can kill both of them? Yeah, like I just walk okay. up, get their attention, attack the one that killed me, and Excellent. then when they're coming at me, you get the other guy. Excellent. That sounds perfect. And, uh, John, are, are you? do you want a piece of this guy, or, or can I have all that sweet sweet I... smashing? You know, I, I I was never really a violent guy so much. Um, I... Be. I I am full of white hot satanic fury, so I definitely need someone to take it out on. And like Thug Number Two is regrettably the guy who's going to be the recipient. Um, for those who joined us late uh, or or didn't catch it the first time, my melee weapon is like a big ass, like damn near life size Jesus style crucifix. <laughs> Um, that I just like drag behind me, like one of those gigantic buster swords that's like way too heavy. And uh, yeah, uh, so I can hopefully sneak while dragging it. Uh, I guess I have to do a sex check for that, huh? Uh, or just use two hands. I'll use two hands. You know, uh, I, but yes, I like as to you think were, of if myself you were, as a real. If you were actually... I was going to say, I, I like to think of myself as a real. Who was it? Simon, who helped Jesus carry the cross for a while? I don't remember. I think so, but Simon. I haven't followed that religion in quite quite some decades. <laughs> so, uh, but yes. Yeah, so, whoever's wanting to be stealthy, go ahead and make me your sex check. All right. So it'll be at one, unless you have a reason why you would have a second die. So I guess um, maybe they, Drake, you might get a bonus die since you're hunting the actual person that killed you. I'd be giving you a bonus die if you want to argue that. Uh, I pass. That's a three. Am I also rolling right now? If you want to be stealthy, I'm saying. Well, you you're not be being stealthy no, though. No, okay. no, no, that's why I just the, didn't know yeah. how you wanted to make the surprise. I am the uh, distraction. Okay, so how does that play out? How do you distract him? Your Max is um, hiding or, you know, stealthy. So I would roll up on, like, I, we would probably, like, compare notes, figure out our plan, and then I would just, like, go around the building and roll up from the opposite direction on my motorcycle. Nice. And then I just, like, rev it really loud and then get off, brass knuckle on my left hand, baseball bat in my right hand, point at the guy who killed me, and just be like, hey, you remember me? <laughs> the direct so approach. He glowers, recognizes you, eyes bug out. Then he grits his teeth and goes, I guess I didn't fucking finish it, did I? <laughs> That's a pretty good, uh, you know, the living dead have come back for you. Uh, come back, I gotta say. No, yeah, you did. Cracks his knuckles. Too bad I spent all of my knuckle like cracking earlier. Um, <laughs> and uh, 
throws off his jacket and you see this guy is just like ripped even like the 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 like the very wan light here you can just see under his shirt he's just ripped and he steps forward i pop the collar in my hawaiian shirt <laughs> <laughs> there is no douchier look it's like challenge. weekend at Bernie's, but Bernie is pissed. <laughs> I would watch that movie, I think. We should have been doing weekend at Bernie's the whole time. God we damn get it. Bernie's six. Bernie's pissed. <laughs> with the uh, well, you can play shirt. weekend at Bernie's once you're all done with this. So. Uh, uh... <laughs> all right. So um, you he moves forward to engage you. Um, the other guy, uh, he uh, grabs him by the arm and goes, do you want me to call for backup? And no, he's not going to get a chance. I've, uh, I've done it once. I can do it again. Oh, no. Nice. I got this fucker. So now we fight? How many, how many math rocks am I throwing? Um, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and give me three since this guy explicitly is the one that you want to take down. Two, one, and five out of two. So one of them's dead on. This is exact match, yeah. One loss, and so two two success, success, one loss. So you have an uncomplicated success in braining the dude, and as you're doing that, you get a vision from your totem spirit. What do you want to ask him? (laughs) It's the body of a bat with the head of Ozzy. uh, (laughs) um, (laughs) as you bite his head off, you get a secret revealed to you. Uh, what is... What is... <laughs> when I... <laughs> when, when Ozzy goes to hell. <laughs> That's the form he's going to take when Ozzy goes to hell. Just a bat. Ozzy's head. Big bat on stage. Just biting his head off night after night. <laughs> what uh... is the thing you want to know about your situation or scene? Um, my, uh, shit, um, shortest path to get to the bedroom. That that way, once we're in there, I can just get to where... Some... Just get it. Get uh, it. Well, for for you, it would be the central elevator. For someone that had, like, a spider tone, I mean, it would just be fucking scaling the building. I got this, you guys. So you would know exactly how and where, and you even see like the key card that's in the guy's jacket. So um, we have Max that is in the shadows with the giant crucifix, and you have Wyatt that is off to the side. Wyatt, you're watching um, your compatriot just fucking bean and bash this dude's head in with a baseball bat. I'm uh, uh, I'm taking a uh, lesson from Taco from the Adventure Zone. Wyatt's cool out here. <laughs> Why are you like like doing a journalistic like I got an in scoop this big scoop on this this crime that's happening right here and you're like <laughs> send uh, right no. up. somehow somewhere Wyatt procured a uh, hot dog <laughs> and he is like leaning against the side of the hearse eating, you were alone eating his with those dog. corpses for quite some time back there while I was driving <laughs> I have well, a feeling that uh, that might have something to do with it. So, uh, yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, I mean, hot dog. I'm going to um, so like the crossbar of the cross, right? Like that's the sweet spot. Just like any, you know, war hammer, you really want to use like the maximum circumference of the swing, and then get all of that like impact into like a sort of concentrated area. So I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do a full 360, and then come around and wham from behind sideways right in the head this dude with my big old fucking crucifix made out of solid i don't know what's in danger it's probably made out of that uh and that is so a you got two dice that? so you get one from your normal attempt and one since you had stealthed up excellent all righty <clears throat> and wyatt are you off <laughs> your moth a bite of your hot dog John, that's you. The, are you, the, the are, moth so are you giving your on the end. You giving your moth a, a bite of the hot dog? No, no. What moths don't need hot dogs? <laughs> are you are you insane? 
I was like, gonna say I'm not you, sure that's in their diet. It, but... For like one moment, it turns into this like giant hell moth creature that's like completely like just drenched in fangs and like tentacles. Yeah. And shit. Okay. Okay, and buddy, you can fuck right off. This is my dog. Okay. <laughs> I I had a partial success. Uh, I right. had a one so, and a four. So, all right, great. So you lash out with the the crucifix, and you completely just crumple this this guy. You hear bone snapping, and then your crucifix snaps in half. Oh uh, well, actually, that's you know what, as it should be. But I have lost my melee weapon, but that's okay. <laughs> so it goes. Uh, so you just absolutely crucify the person on a crucifix, basically. <laughs> you impale them. I toss um, you my baseball bat. I think he's probably done for with that one hit. Oh, Unless yeah, but I still, you, you wrecked your cross. I gave oh, you my that's baseball right. bat. Actually, for what's coming, I'm going to need uh, both my hands and feet free. Um, okay. But thank you. Um, you want my shotgun? I mean, like, I think technically I have a hunting rifle with a strap, oh. right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just going to, like, have that strapped to my back, but thank you. I can use the stock of it if I need to as a melee weapon and probably pew-pew someone otherwise. Um, yeah, so is Pashki's dude dead from the clobbering? Um, he <clears throat> is... Oh, from Pat, Pat. Oh, yeah. So Max's guy is just completely brained in. Just like there's a crater um, where and you can even see like where the barbed wire rents are in the flesh. What about? Uh, oh, yeah. So so he's. Uh, so you like, dispatch these two condominium. Excellent. Guards. All right, guys. It's time for my special power to come into play. Um, I am going to 100 percent like Peter Parker it. Up the side of this building. I, I'm not saying that as I do it. I'm, I'm explaining my plan to my fellows. Um, I think I'm going to just like scale this building using my stickiness. Uh, then, let me see. The question is how the how I'm going to get the both of you in there stealthily. I or... do appreciate that you are invoking Spider-Man and you have a journalist. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Or pictures yeah. of Spider-Man. Yeah. And he has a camera with him, so we could, we could get some really good uh, pictures of, of Spider-Man right here. And if you want me to do my Jonah Jameson a la JK What's-His-Nuts, I won't, but it's it's pretty good. Um, help me out with the strategy here, guys. I can scale the building. Oh, roof access. I bet that would do the trick, right? So I, I had the vision of the shortest path for me, which was going in in the elevator, and I imagine we could get the keys off of yeah, the you saw new dead bodies. Is, yeah, and the guy that okay. you beamed, you see that he's got the key card. All right. I won't get to stick to, to that building, but I might I mean, uh, I might make my escape that way just to, you know. We could so split up. Do that. The, the uh, surprise and the onward, like, double pincer movement that we just did, we could do it again, but in the bedroom. I love it. We could do it again. But so at this team. time, why Get you it. finish your hot dog? Do you suddenly somehow have a second hot dog, or are you going to be following them into the building? Are you the or are you the getaway driver? Are you a one dog man. So um, I, I see them me. going into the building, and I'm like, well, I do, I do want to go have some words with uh with Mister with Mister Snow. So uh, he reaches into the uh car and picks up his other hot dog. <laughs> and follows them into the building. <laughs> Excellent. So now I'm gonna have to make a pregen in the future that just has pockets full of hot dogs for <laughs> no reason. He has. They're in a in big eye small mouth. Uh, there's a uh, there's a perk you can take called katana space, and another one called uh, personal armory. The idea is katana space. You just like whatever you're wearing, you can just have like pull giant things out of your pockets. Personal armory is like whenever you need I'm a weapon, so, you just have it. I'm and selling I figure, these fine leather jackets. I figure, I figure <laughs> that uh, Wyatt has hot dog space <laughs> <laughs> and personal street vendor. <laughs> so just like, yeah, it's like, a hot dog. He, he has a dimensional appendix and uses it for the most delicious purpose ever. I want you all to know science. that. Um, Ooh. Okay, so another side note: Look, uh, if you notice, I got a spider. If it's you a know, sign. Oh, it's a sign. Yeah, actually see it. Yes, 
If you notice in uh in the Avengers movies, Robert Downey Jr. is always eating, like Iron Man's always eating shit. It's because the director couldn't get Robert to stop snacking. <laughs> and so they just worked into the script. I love That's it. what's happening right now. Because I'm a very hungry man in real life. And so it's like, <laughs> man, I wish I could be eating a hot dog right now. I know why it's eating a hot dog. Put it all into your character. That's right. Exactly. It's the uh, Stanislavski method. It's, it's art just... imitating life. I love yes. the fact that this, like, probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, Drake, you're just, like, brutalizing this person's skull into a bloody pulp while you're just, like, eating hot dogs, just, like, chain, <laughs> like, grinding hot dogs. I love it. What? All right, I, I I had cut you off earlier, Max, as you were describing what you were going to do or part of your strategy. We oh, I just think top. that what I'm what what I'm gonna do is uh, is go with these guys. Like, there's we could do the pincher move, but um, frankly, like, I'd rather use my spider powers for a hasty exit if I need to. So, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna use the uh, dead goons uh, keys to get up all up in that condo building and all up in that elevator shaft and all up in that condo. All right. So you have this dramatic montage of scaling the walls, uh, keying in, taking the elevator up, cramming in two more foot longs. And <laughs> you find yourself at the door of Gabriel Snow. So um, we took all the keys off the goons. I wonder if they would have a a key to this guy's place. Uh, do you guys want to check every key they have just to see if one of them fits? Wyatt pulls out one of his guns. I got a key for everything right here. It's uh, it's um, it's kind of a skeleton key. I mean, it's a gun. I, sh I can shoot the door is what I'm trying to say. I'm really hoping you're saying that with like a mouthful of bun. Like, yeah, I'm spray I am spraying processed uh, beef product everywhere. It's delicious. That, that's the um, benefit of being a white is you're immune to things that would kill a normal human. So all those carcinogens just make you strong, wow. baby. That's right. Way to bring up a, the colonization of America. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. How many of no, those were Everybody corn dogs? gets one. Everybody gets one. I got my. You got yours. Have I taken mine? You can take yours if you want to. All right. I'll, no, I'll, I'll save it. Save it. <laughs> okay. Oh, we are. We are. Hey, I know, can we close. kill? Can we go kill Snow real quick? We are almost yeah, out of time. I know. Yeah, I open know. The door I know. No surprise. Yep. Uh, blows the doorknob off, man. And I think that if I'm not mistaken, we're going to spare the innocent young lady. Um, maybe Why? like now we're help. Well, I mean, but wow, she, okay. No, no. Wait, wait. I do have a good explanation for why we would save the lady. She is. She is corrupting these scumbags. She is leading them to hell. She's doing she's doing the Dark Lord's work. Let's leave her alone and deal with the scumbag, eh? All right. All right. I'm so as it. you kick in Holes the Holes are awesome. <laughs> Holes are awesome. So as you kick in the door and say, surprise, <clears throat> uh, wait, who's kicking in the door, actually? He's got the I heaviest am. beat. Okay, there we go. All right, Wyatt, go ahead and make me uh, a one die sex. And Not I'm, violence? Yeah. I, one die sex for the moment. Okay, and I'm trying to roll... Under. Okay, I'm, I, under. I succeeded. Oh, all right. So you yell surprise, and then you hear the loud barking report of a shotgun going off, point blank. Uh, but with that moth-like reflex of yours, you flutter out of the way of this <laughs> mirage of buckshot... You know, like reflex. spewing crumbs right and left and a couple hunks of dog and relish. And um, you see that uh, Gabriel is, <clears throat> uh, he has shouldered a very uh, high powered combat shotgun and uh, is dramatically shunk shunk. Y'all dumb fuck with the wrong priest. Um, <laughs> and I, I goes, thought he was I a pastor. That. My, my feelings about him just went up a little bit, at least. I mean... At least they didn't invoke <laughs> Dead Alive where he says, I kick ass for the Lord. No. Yeah. He goes, I, I, he says, like, I hope you're ready to dance because uh, you're going to have company here in a few minutes. And uh, in the distance, you can hear the wailing of sirens. 
Ooh, okay. scary, scary. We're all going to be dead by then. It doesn't matter. None of this matters. So, you don't matter. Okay. As far as you, know what? Today. you know what? I would like to um, rush the Rev and wrapping one arm around his waist, just smash through the window right behind him. Oh. Just go right through the condo and out the window and all the way down into the parking lot and break my fall on top of the hearse. Um, because I am dead and yeah, like, so that you don't have really much to lose at this spot if you can break through the glass. So make that a two die check, unless you can right. argue a three. No, I think two is just fine, and this would be a violence check. That, that is definitely violence, <laughs> and that is a dead on the number success and a crit, so a two and a six. All One right, is exactly so... the stat. Um, and all I'm going to ask the spider spirit this time is, uh, how do I cradle this guy so that he survives long enough for us to get him into the crematorium? Like what's the proper position in which to hold him to take this impact? Cause I want him to survive what I'm about to do to him. So you are able to fling yourself dramatically, uh, through the window, shattering the whole gas pl- glass uh, pain, and you plummet down towards the pool area of the condo, and ah. you w- put all of your weight and cradle his neck, or you know, you embrace him, and you smash into the diving board. It snaps and breaks, and you still like hit against like the side of the pool, um, and you hear and feel most of his C, like C one through C four, all just like snap. <laughs> And um, then something in the lower lumbar. So he is paralyzed. Uh, and you know that you have to get out of there fast with his limp body as he is gasping uh, before the police catch up with you. Let's so just jump is... out the window. Yeah. He did. Yeah. No. no. We're well, I'm saying to. you got to yeah, get almost. out from the scene fast. So we will, we can close there dramatically as you uh, perhaps cheese it to the. I Almost. would love a chance to fight the cops when they arrive. So, oh, yeah, there maybe we leave, be a, a maybe gun we leave battle a as you uh, there fight your way yeah. to the crematorium. They don't the need to line. see us fight and kill the police if they know in their hearts that we do. That's right. Yeah. So, so just that remember was, uh... Blues Brothers 2000 soundtrack. <laughs> Yes. That's like four us, extra dice for the role. You know? I am pushing us into the discussion screen. We are Let's out of game. It. All right. Yeah. I had a good time with that. Like I was afraid when when you talked about it being um, driven by us primarily, us chuckleheads. I was like, "There's no way this is going to be, you know, something that was that, that that like will do the game justice." But I hope that the uh, the creator feels we. I feel like we. Did Charles, you are always really um, nervous about us building the game world, but we always do a great job. Uh, yeah, I used, yeah I used to be the most <laughs> nervous one. Um, yeah, and then I learned because my the, my my proving ground was was when we played the Ignera because I was like, I wrote this like whole huge map thing because I was like, I don't know what they're gonna do, like I don't know, like, I mean all this, and then like you went through a foyer and an air duct, and that was it. And then after that, <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, I so I've like scoped down because, uh, yeah. I left all these like potential hooks, like with a potential connection, to, like human trafficking or a yeah. big pharmaceutical company, and it's not none of that, which is great because you know you just take this in the direction it goes, and I would have never so, expected. So real quick, um, there's a thing I read about game design a while back, and I think it's brilliant, and I want to share it with anyone who wants to be an author or a game designer. Um, the players care about what they're doing and what affects them directly, um, so. This is primarily like game designer. Like, oh, I'm going to build this entire history for this kingdom. Players don't fucking care. They don't. They want to know what like what affects them personally for their characters, and it's great to know that because you can build a more full world. But, and again, like I say that, but like I'm the guy that reads the entire rule book for fun. <laughs> uh, so like there are exceptions, but when you're when you're building a game like. The more you build out, the more likely we're going to do the one thing that you didn't build, yeah, especially the three of us. Yep. Now, one thing that we we've been meaning to get back into a good pattern about is having like a quick 
like reaction round table. Mm-hmm. Should we bring that back up today? So you yeah, kind of let's leaned it. into that, John. Do you want to also give us your two cents on play reaction to specifically so, this game? Yeah, so I'm a little bit under the weather uh, 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 today. So I'm sorry if I was a little lower energy. It was a fun. It was a fun game. Um, I came into it a little bit leery, um, because there's a lot of games out there that have the like, and you're gonna talk about your like this game is about overcoming trauma, and a lot of them uh, feel very forced. Um, it helps that we're playing. We play this. We played this especially pretty silly and over the top. But um, when you when you name the stats sex and violence, like you're asking for over the top, uh, yeah, and I think yeah, I think that this uh, I think that this played really well as a loose improv, like one shot game. I don't know that I would want to, like I would play this game again. I don't know I would want to play a campaign in this game yeah and i i i agree i think that'd be kind of hard because it's designed once you know in my head if he didn't say i want to get you to the crematorium i'd be like yo you die right there because you you've killed your guy but you added on that extra to give a little extra flavor at the end i feel like this game would be great for a party that meets regularly but they just didn't have the the actual thing they were going to play ready Mm -hmm. this would be a great like hey we're here we still want to play a game Let's make some shit up and have fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and adding on top of that, um, Pashki, as a GM, like, there are times where, like, life comes at you and you don't have time to prep. And so having a game where there is no GM prep is a great, like, that's fantastic. Like, <laughs> I don't get that reprieve much, like, conceptually. So that's great. And my uh, my piece of input would be, in addition to the game experience, which I had a great time with, uh, the book itself has some like really good art, mm-hmm. um, especially if you dig that World of Darkness kind of like 90s goth aesthetic. Um, there's some very good stuff in there, and uh, it's well worth checking out and picking up. We've on all of our socials for the evening, Instagram, Twitter, we have a link uh, where you can grab it, which is at Drive Through RPG, I think. Yeah, and it's free. Um, yeah, and so just go pick that up um yeah mature content so if if you're first of all if you're watching this and you're like not well i was gonna say mature but really like maturity is sort of a relative term but i consider myself highly immature but yeah mature content warning on the the book you know and i'm i'm probably one of the more conservative people as far as like what what to try to put here and so like at first i was a little scared seeing a content warning from dtrpg and seeing where it's sex and violence i i was like oh no uh but really this is there's very little bit there's very little of anything that could be offensive in this compared to some of the other things that we've played you know, you know even some of those uh more like ose products in general so yeah. i think this is you know along with safe help that uh, healthy safety tools so I always appreciate when we employ them here, and I think that's fantastic that we're comfortable enough to do that. That's yep. you can write any type of content, so I think this yeah. is great. So I had fun as GM, not really knowing what the heck was going to happen. But that brings us to our announcements. So we don't have a lot uh, uh, tonight. Uh, I will say Zine Quest is still going on right now on Kickstarter. And uh, our Discord, which you can join, by the way. Please join our Discord. Um, we've been talking about all the projects we're excited about, uh, which is a lot. Um, as far as us, Ian is currently hard at work editing the Morka Beans text. Morka Beans is completely written. It's done. It's getting edited. And then we start layout. There's a lot uh, of really cool stuff in there. I'm not just saying that because I'm getting paid. That there's there's generally some <laughs> there's like your eight crazy nights table. Ah, oh, that's that's real genius. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to write. Uh, there that's was some, great. if you have so if you didn't back this, you can still get it. The pre-order is up on the madnessheart.press website, um, and there's a lot of cool stuff on there. I designed some bonus stuff with the Kickstarter, which. Unfortunately, it's not uh, part of the pre-order, but um, I'm sure it will be 
you know, come around and all that. Uh, I had a book come out last weekend. Uh, that is Shade of Grey. It is book three of um, the Book of Zev series, which is about a Jewish exorcist. Uh, it is not spider punk. It is not extreme horror. It is kind of dark urban fantasy. And uh, I've been told by the people that have read this book early, that's probably the best of the series so far. So please check that out if you want to. It is on Amazon. Uh, the paperback and the Kindle version are not attached, so I haven't been promoting it as much as I would want to. Uh, but soon, hopefully, that will be fixed and all changed. If you want to see more of us, you can go to wanmoncast.com where you can just check out all of our shit online. Um, <laughs> we are moving back into the audio space, uh, so you'll be able to get us everywhere you get your podcast, um, as well as subscribing on Twitch and catching us live where you can interact with us and suggest things that we will probably do because we're very impressionable. Or, of course, mm -hmm. if you are watching us on Twitch, you can find us on YouTube and mm -hmm. like and subscribe. Look, wherever you're checking us out, please like and subscribe. It helps us out so much. And Correct. if you want to stay abreast with all <laughs> abreast, uh, with all the stuff we're doing, you can find us on Twitter at OneMonCast. Uh, like I said, OneMonCast.com. You can find links to all of our shit, all of our books, all of our projects. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us on this consensual journey we call Wandering Monster. I have been John Baldisberger. I've been Charles R. Bernard. Ian Servas. Mr. Paschke. And uh, we will be back next week. And until then, oh, I forgot to do my whites joke. <laughs>